Demons of gossip. All right, so what's a gossip? Someone who spreads a report with bad motives in order that a recipient's esteem of that person is diminished. If the report is true, then it's gossip. If the report is false, then that is called slander. Now, I've chosen a few examples here to get started on this. I'm going to go first with Nehemiah 6, 5 to 8. Then sent Sambalat, his servant unto me in like manner, the fifth time with an open letter in his hand, wherein was written, it is reported among the heathen, and Gashmu saith, that thou and the Jews think to rebel, for which cause thou buildest the wall, that thou mayest be their king according to these words. And thou hast appointed prophets to preach of thee at Jerusalem, saying, <clears throat> There is a king in Judah, and now shall it be reported to the king according to these words. Come now, therefore, let us take counsel together. Then I said unto him, saying, There are no such things done as thou say, but thou feign them out of thine own heart. Next, you're going to have false rumors that were used to intimidate Nehemiah, as we read in Psalm 41, 5 through 8. Let's read that. My enemies speak evil of me. When shall he die and his name perish? And he, and if he come to see me, he speaketh vanity. His heart gathereth iniquity to itself. When he goeth abroad, he telleth it. All that hate me whisper together against me. Against me do they devise my hurt. An evil disease, say they, cleaveth fast unto him. And now that he lieth, he shall rise up no more. All right. And also I want to uh, quote here John 7, 12 to 13. And there was much murmuring. Now I'm picking these passages because of the different ways Gossip is used. In other words, it's talebearer, it's murmuring, it's slander, it's false rumors, and so on. As I'm just making a point with the why I'm beginning with these passages. Again, John 7, 12 to 13. There was much murmuring among the people concerning him, for some said, He is a good man, others said, Nay, but he deceiveth the people. Howbeit no man spake openly of him for fear of the Jews. Now let's read 3 John 9 to 10. When he had said these words unto them, he abode still in Galilee. But when his brethren were gone up, then went he also up unto the feast, not openly, but as it were in secret. There's a lot to learn. This demon of gossip is incredibly powerful. All right, so let's start in the concordance. The word gossip is not in there. Gossip is not in the Bible. It was not a word used in the authors of the Bible in their timeline. That word was not used. But many words were. So, when you do a concordance search, the, one of the first ones you'll come up with um, is tail bearer. Tail bearer is number 7400. Look at that meaning. It says slander, slanderer, informer. So when you look in the concordance for tail bearer, there are six verses. I'm going to read five of them because uh, most of them are in Proverbs. One is in Leviticus. Let's start there. Leviticus 19.16. Thou shalt not go up and down as a tail bearer among thy people. Neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord. Proverbs 11.13. A tail bearer reveals secrets, but he that is of a faithful spirit, concealeth the matter. Proverbs 18.8 The words of a talebearer are as wounds, and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. Proverbs 20.19 He that goeth about as a talebearer revealeth secrets. Therefore meddle not with him that flattereth with his lips. Proverbs 26.20 where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. So where there is no tail bearer, the strife ceases. Do you see how profound that is right there? 
if there's no one gossiping, slandering, backbiting, right? Because those are some, again, some of the words used in the Bible is backbiting also. Then, then all of the division and the strife ceases. Is that the world we live in today? The, the, the demons of gossip is so huge. I think you'll be, I think you'll be um, profoundly moved by the time I get to the end of this video, how big this demon is and what it leads to. The Holy Spirit, I wanted to put out a different video today and the Holy Spirit said, stop everything. What time is it? It is right now 6.03 p.m. I've been 12 hours at this, just this one video to narrow it down to the verses that I'm narrowing it down. I mean, do you know how, geez, just, just tongue alone was like 126 verses I had to go through. Just the word tongue. Because tongue in a sentence is also, for the most part, when you do a one word study, 126 verses, um, or maybe it was 123, whatever, it was over 100, over 120. Um, it's a lot. It's, it, there's a lot to this. It's very profound. And you really can't escape it. If you're going to speak to somebody in this world, you've really got to be careful. All right, so slander in the concordance has three verses. Um, Numbers 1436, but I'm going to read here instead, Psalm 3113. Again, I have to pick and choose what verses I use. I only have so much time. Psalm 3113, for I have heard the slander of many. Fear was on every side. While they took counsel together against me, they devised to take away my life. Proverbs 10.18 He that hideth hatred with lying lips, again, another way to gossip. There's so many ways. There's no, I mean, the amount of verses I read in the last 12 hours to narrow it down to maybe, you know, maybe get an upload of this thing in 24 hours. He that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. All right, the word slandered has one verse. That's found in 2 Samuel 19, 27. He and he have slandered thy servant unto my lord the king. But my lord the king is an angel of God. Do therefore what is good in thine eyes. Now... You got to go to the word murmur. Murmur's not in the concordance, but murmuring has eight verses and murmured has 19. All right. The point here is how important this demon possessing you is. The Holy Spirit wanted me to understand this in a much deeper way. For it is the first step toward a larger and harder to rid and an invitation, an open portal that follows this demon of gossip, the next demon, which will be a legion, is idolatry. First is gossip, and it leads to nothing other than idolatry. And those demons of idolatry, they do travel as a legion. Not 100% of the time, nothing's 100%. I'm just making a point here. Idolatry is all that we do in this world. That's all this world is made up of. So that's why you need to know if you're participating in this, you probably have a legion of demons. What is a legion? 6,000. 6,000. It's a Roman term. It's a Roman military strategy of 6,000 men performing a military action. The 6,000 means it's, it, that, that's what they call the legion. <clears throat> so... These demons, gossip demons, they have a strategy and they win every time. They know how to hook you in the name of entertainment. They are so intelligent. Why are they so hard to stop? Well, Proverbs 18, 8 says, the words of a talebearer are as wounds and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. That is the term in the Bible for your soul. Innermost parts of the belly means your soul. It darkens the light of your soul. But most Christians, true and faithful servants, you know, I don't call myself a Christian, but true and faithful servants think nothing of it. 
They think nothing of this. It's so much part of our upbringing. We do not recognize it. We simply do not recognize it. We don't hear it when it's happening. And we are partaking of this sin, but the sin, right? Gossip comes in many flavors. It also includes listening. All right, I got that from Proverbs 17, 4. A wicked doer giveth heed to false lips. Again, another term for gossip. And a liar giveth ear to a naughty tongue. You almost cannot partake in this world without partaking in this sin. This sin is huge. This demon, this highly intelligent demon knows the lack of intelligence humans have. They've been studying us since we got here. They were here before us. All right. So now you guys are familiar with the term. You know, how, how is gossip so large? How, the gossip columns, or whatever the gossip columns call them themselves, hot topics. You know how many shows are on gossiping? Just all of the, all of the shows. Well, and some of them will call it dishing the dirt. I remember that term back in the 90s. What's the dirt? You know, what's the, dish out the dirt, whatever. It basically means sharing the juicy info. You learn about somebody. Maybe the intent isn't to directly cause damage, but by keeping the gossip alive, it continues to spread and taint the image of a person that it's about, or, you know, of whom, whom is it directed to. Proverbs 20, verse 19. He that goeth about as a tale bearer revealeth secrets. Therefore, meddle not with him that flattereth with his lips. And I'm going to jump over to the New Testament on this one. James 5, 9 says, don't grumble against each other. So grumble is another word for gossip. You see how hard of a study this was to do? There's so many ways to, to get this message across. And once you understand what the message is getting across, it, it's hard pressed to go even one chapter in all of the Bible that doesn't speak on this topic. It's, I, I you know... After the study I've done today, I'm convinced it's in every chapter, except maybe Genesis 1 and 2. Well, no, the snake, the snake did that, so I'm wrong about that. It's in Genesis uh, 3, for sure, with the snake in the garden. Don't grumble, again, James 5, 9. Don't grumble against each other, brothers, or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. All right, gossip is also called rumors. You hear something, right? What is rumors? You hear something and it's not good. And it's also not confirmed as true. But you tell someone or you ask someone else about it to get more info. So the rumor mill turns and turns and the gossip spreads. And it always makes somebody a lot of money. And it always exalts somebody else. They become rich and famous off of this stuff. All right, so here... Proverbs 13, 3 says, He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life, but he that open wide his lips shall have destruction. All right, so it's a flavor of gossip. It involves speaking spiteful or slanderous words about another who is not present and can do nothing in defense. It's secretive, and the Bible actually mentions it by name, in Proverbs 25, 23, the north wind driveth away rain, so does an angry countenance as a backbiting tongue. So, whoever secretly slanders his neighbor, him I will destroy. No one who has a haughty look and an arrogant heart will I endure. That was Psalm 101, 5. So a lot of people would say, you know, I wasn't really, you know, I was just making a joke. I didn't mean it really. I was just joking around. So if you've ever taken some part of truth and turned it into a joke about someone that makes others question their character, 
It also serves as a passive way to spread more gossip. An example, maybe he or she will actually get off the couch today long enough to, you know, blah, 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 fill in that blank as an idea, you know, as an example. When the joking is harmful to another person, it's actually called mockery. It's mocking them. How can you know a mocker? Again, always go to scripture for all of your answers. Please don't seek your answers anywhere else. Don't go anywhere else. How do you know a mocker? Proverbs 21, 24. Proud and haughty scorner is his name, who dealeth in proud wrath. I want you to just think about every single talk show host that's ever been out there. This is their job to do this and people eat it up. They love it. They keep them on the air for decades at a time, decades, because they're mocking. All right, Proverbs 9, 8 says, reprove not a scorner, lest he hate thee. Rebuke a wise man and he will love thee. Do you understand what that was just said there? If not, spend some time in Proverbs 9, 8 right there. All right. In addition, Proverbs 22, 10. Really, honestly, Proverbs, Proverbs has got this, you know, there's so many answers. And Proverbs on this one, I can't say that. Well, I mean, I, I can't, I don't know how many verses I read today. Over 200 at least. Proverbs 22, 10 says, cast out the scorner and contention shall go out. Yea, strife and reproach shall cease. Now, what is another profound uh, parable, lesson, understanding, wisdom, knowledge that we have in the Bible? It is that we reap what we sow. With that in mind, this type of gossip is said in such a way to make the listener question or assume something about the character of a person. For example, isn't it weird how he keeps staring at your girlfriend when you're not looking? I picked that one out of back in the 90s, uh, thinking about a Cincinnati, I guess they're called uh, daytime talk, oh, talk, talk shows, daytime talk shows. This, <laughs> this right here is what kept those talk shows alive for three decades or more. It's unbelievable, really. All right, so James 3, 5 tells us, Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boast. Consider what a great foreset is set on a fire by a small spark. Forest. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. I live in Arizona. A cigarette being thrown out the car window can cause a forest fire that will go on for months at a time. One cigarette. You toss that cigarette out into Oak Creek Canyon and you'll catch tens, if not hundreds of thousands of acres on fire. And because you can't, there's no trails in Oak Creek Canyon, you can't access. Firemen can't get in there. There's no getting in to Oak Creek Canyon between Sedona and Flagstaff. So we, we have to, we just have to, you know, hope that rain comes, which it's Arizona. It's not going to rain. Hope that rain comes or that, you know, the fire doesn't make it into the town of Sedona before, you know, it, the fi all the fire crews can do is try and create a, a, a burn line, that it stops at a burn line. Anyways, I've lived here 15, 16 years now. I know all about this. We actually, in the summertime, smoking's not allowed outside. You're not allowed to turn your grill on outside. No firewood, no charcoal is sold. It's a serious, big problem here. So one little cigarette can burn up hundreds of thousands of acres. And we have, you know, to drive around Oak Creek Canyon and see the burn. Okay, what about the whispered, right? The little secrets, the little whisperings. These also are subtle ins ins insinuations that can mislead others into thinking wrong thoughts. <clears throat> especially if the conclusions are based on gossipy hunches. Again, an example. 
It's interesting how he was out of town the night that the incident occurred. Whatever incident, fill on that bike. But do you see how it's, how it's kind of, what's the word I want? It's, it's like the snake in the garden. It's subtle, but it's there. It makes you question. It makes you wonder. Snake was very subtle. And Eve's like, Eve was in her enlightened, glorified body. And yet she still fell from something as subtle as what the snake said. So think about the snake in the garden. Because this kind of stuff is done all the time. People, the, the demons love this, this subtle tactic. It's a subtle strategy. It is their military warfare on getting humans to invite the demon in. They want to t partake in this because we're programmed to do that. Media, TV is programming you to do that. It's called drama and everybody's addicted to it. All right, so here, Proverbs 26, 20 tells us, where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. So where there is no tail bearer, the strife ceases. The, the, the amount, the, the themes throughout the Bible and the hundreds of ways that this is said throughout the Bible. Now that you know this, that's why the Holy Spirit was so insistent today that I do this. Because this was the furthest thing from my mind, really, when I woke up today. My mind was completely on Amalek. I was, I was looking at everything I could on Amalek and his descendants and his genealogy. And that's how I was going to spend my day. And Holy Spirit's like, we don't have time for that. No, 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 no. You, I need you in on murmuring. And so that, that's been a 12-hour study, and I'm so profoundly grateful for it. So here's a warning from Luke 12.3. Therefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light, and that which ye have spoken in the ear in closets shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. That'll be us when we're standing in front of the throne. Every bit of it's written down in the book. It's all written down. It's all there. There's no such thing as a secret. Secrets don't exist. Nope, that doesn't work. Okay, so with this foundation having been laid, right, the Holy Spirit wants so quickly to get out some basic info that is critical for our entrance into the kingdom, one either everlasting or one that of damnation. So this is something that is so popular in our world. Gossip magazines, gossip columns and newspapers, it's on the radio. It's on who knows at this point how many millions, if not billions, of podcasts. They have all made and destroyed the lives of the rich and famous for their gossip on the hot topics of the day. Is that what they call it today? Hot topics? I don't know. I don't watch TV. But it is a billion dollar per year industry. Per year. Gossip. I want you to hear that now. I looked it up. Gossip. On I looked up. I think on the matter of hot topics, like what what's the what's the dish, right? What's the dirt of the day? Whatever that dirt is, it's a billion dollar a multi billion dollar a year industry per year. That's unbelievable. And there's only one reason for that. We love it. If we didn't love it, we wouldn't be throwing money at it. But we all are. So. <clears throat> from the gossip, right, from the gossip demon that opens the portal, the invitation into idol worship, right? Idol worship of all of the movie stars, the music stars, and the sports stars. Once that legion of demons arrive, it's all downhill. You can do your own look into these people who have started and thrived for a few decades in this industry, and their decline and loss of everything. Not only that, their descent into drugs, alcohol, and all sorts of perverted addictions. Just, I mean, it's just, what's the Bible call it? Lasciviousness. Hard word to say. All right, so it's all getting so normalized, even and especially in the church. Look at all the prophets. There's self, 
what do they call that? Self-proclaim. They, they, every other person now, if, maybe that's even, I'm not saying it enough. I think it's more than every other person has become a prophet overnight. They have dreams and visions. They prophesy overnight. They all have YouTube channels with huge followers. How do they get that? How do these prophets, apostles, pastors, how do they get so many followers? As well as money, as well as real estate. They get it by gossiping about the politicians we all love to hate. They gossip about the politicians, the presidents, the Pope, right? The educators, the universities, fill in the blank. They get it because we love to hate them, even, even though they are evil. So what? It's still gossiping. It's still gossiping. It's still the same demon. Just because we all want to get together and hate a, a certain political party or a political person or whatever the thing is, it's, it's, they're gaining money and they're gaining followers and they're gaining popularity by slander, by slandering, by murmuring. They are murmurers. They have 40,000 people on any given Sunday in their church because of gossip and slander. And not one of the 40,000 can stand up and quote a Bible verse on this or even recognize, not, even have Bible literacy to recognize this and walk away. To, to mark and avoid them. That's the sad state of affairs. But, you know, it's the Laodicean church. So, we knew it was coming. Been here for, I don't know, at least 30 years? At least since the 90s, for sure. <clears throat> Their followers love these people. Even though everything they say never comes true, they are loved. Why are they loved? Because if you're listening and watching it, the demon in you is part of that demonic family and family stay together. If you don't understand by watching that, you've invited a demon into you as part of that demon military, you know, legion. And the idols come in after that. This gossip is just, it's just the first door. Idolatry is after that. And then forget about it. There's, if there's anything as big as gossip in the Bible, it's idolatry. It's the devil's world. All right. So their slander and their need to call down the death angel. That's what they do. First, they start the slandering of people. And now it's very popular for them to be calling down the death angel on all these people with their kill strike on their favorite hated politicians. They, they come together in their hatred. And their need for the death angel. They're coming together over that. That's the church today. Don't be fooled. So, or they may be talking about celebrities. I really don't know what they're talking about because I don't watch this stuff. But I can tell you it is this platform of gossip, slandering, mocking. And I see really good Christians who I would say are really good Christians who have Bible literacy, who know the Bible but spend every single day making a video mocking these people. Now, just because you have Bible literacy, and I've done it myself. Oh, I had to repent today many times. I stopped and I stopped today and thought about um, the times I've done that or I shared their videos. And, you know, again, I'll repent right now, here and now. What is it? It is now 626 on February 26, 24. Um, you know, I've done that. I've absolutely done that. All of us have, and that's why the Holy Spirit is saying, stop, all right, stop. I get that you've been doing it. I get that you can't hear and see it. I get that you think you're doing the right thing by mocking these false prophets, but we're not. We're not called to do that. We're called to mark and avoid them. Romans 16, 17, mark and avoid them. So please, if you ever hear me mock, any, past this day that I just said, Call me out on that. Call me, literally call me up, SedonaUFO.com. My cell phone is right there on my website. Call me and say, Anita, you just mocked someone. So that, that helps me out, you know? It reminds me, oh my goodness, I did that. I didn't even catch myself so that I can repent. And I don't need to stand in front of the throne over that. 
right? I got I got to stand in front of the throne for a lot of things. I don't need to be adding to my bucket, all right? I don't need more. So, again, the very platform of goss of gossip, it never. It's just, it's just, I don't know what to say about it. It's just so large. So there is a need for their followers to see, you know, these evil people. Another thing that they do, all right? These false prophets, blah, 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 what they say. They have all of the evil people, all of the, you know, politicians. You're filling that blank. They've all, you know, been hung at Gitmo. All right, so hanging, it's a Roman tactic started in the first empire with the Assyrians. And it's been in every empire for the demon army does not need new strategies. They understand our lack of intelligence. They also understand and can see, can see, smell. They can feel the void of the Holy Spirit in us. There's not a single person on social media podcast. I mean, maybe it's even ham radio at this point. I don't know. But you name it, and it, it, that, it, what it does is it employs this warfare on your, again, your eternal resting place. It's going to be one of peace, or it's going to be one of destruction. Now, do they know it? No. These people who do this stuff, they do not know it. They do not, for the church cannot, will not, and are trained not to, and is so full of pride at this point that Bible literacy is gone, and it will not come back. We are told this absolute final days of Laodicean. Demons of gossip, slander, murmur, and so many other ways. In the word, it is pervasive. Again, as I said earlier, do a study on tongue. The word tongue is in 126 verses. Like I said, I did that. I did that study. I read them all. As you know, all I can do is pick on a few favorites. So today, these were my favorites. Psalm 5, 9. For there is no faithfulness in their mouth. Their inward part is very wickedness. Their throat is an open sepulcher. They flatter with their tongue. That is every single person on social media today, bar none. That is that. You want to sum up everybody that's not reading Bible verses. There you go. Psalm 5, 9. Psalm 57, 4. My soul is among lions, and I lie even among them that are set on fire. Even the sons of men whose teeth are spears and arrows and their tongue a sharp sword. Jeremiah 9, 5. They will deceive everyone his neighbor and will not speak the truth. They have taught their tongue to speak lies and weary themselves to commit iniquity. James 1, 26. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridal, not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart. This man's religion is vain. Here, as in the days of James, we are 2,000 years later, way worse. So, I also want to do James 3, 6 on this. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature. And it is set on fire of hell. Wait, what? Wow. Fire of hell. Do you really want to partake in that? But here's the deal. Gossip seems to be a lot of fun. That it, it, There's this fun nature, like the Hot Topics people, or whatever they call it today. I don't know. I just remember from back in the 90s, that seemed to, you know, dish in the dirt, Hot Topic, whatever. It gives people a lot of followers and it makes them rich and famous. The ones that are doing this, doing these talk shows, whatever you want to call it, TV, radio, doesn't matter. It makes people rich and famous. You know, it's been happening since the entertainment started with Johnny Carson. Remember that way back then? 
or, 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 or what's the other guy? David Letterman. And he was constantly mocking. Talk about a mocker. David Letterman was doing that. I hope that's not gossip by calling that out. If it is, I repent. I don't know. At this point, I'm so, I'm so scared to, to speak anything much other than Bible verses, really. So we'll just go with talk show hosts. Um, but what they do, the purpose of these shows is for the mocking, is for the gossiping, but also, more importantly, is to pop up. The idols, they all have celebrities on there. And we sit at home boosting their ratings. We keep them on air. And they're making jokes on other people's behalf. The entire industry started with gossip. Let me point out one of America's most famous uh, radio shows ever done that started, right? Back in the 1930s, it started with radio shows. What is one of the most famous on this topic? What got this started? What was the revolution that happened on radio and, and snaked its way onto TV because it became so big? 1930s, it was Orson Welles' War of the World from a book written in 1898. On Halloween morning, 1938, Orson Welles woke up to find himself the most talked about a man in America. The night before, Wells and his Mercury Theater on air had performed a radio adaptation of H.G. Wells' The War of the Worlds, converting the 40-year-old novel into fake news bulletins describing a Martian invasion of New Jersey. Listeners mistook those bulletins for the real thing. All kinds of anxious phone calls to the police Newspaper offices and radio stations, stations convinced journalists that the show had caused nationwide hysteria. By the next morning, the 23-year-old 23 Orson Welles, face and name were on the front of newspaper, nearly every newspaper from coast to coast, along with the headlines about the mass panic that his CBS broadcast had inspired. Wells barely had time, it is said, to glance at the papers, leaving him with one, only a horribly vague sense of what he had done to the country. He heard reports of mass stampedes, of suicides, and of anger. How would you like to stand in front of the throne on that one? You just thought you were doing a little radio play. I don't know how many suicides happened, but do you want to stand, stand in front of the throne on that one? I mean, I'm being serious here. It's no kidding. Uh, anyways, he heard of mass suicides, angered listeners threatening to shoot him on the spot. He was quoted saying, if I had planned to wreck my career at that time, I could have gone about it better. So, so anyways, he was afraid for his life, his freedom, and his career were all on the line. So Wells went before dozens of reporters, photographers, cameramen, and arranged press conferences in the CBS building. Each journalist asked him um, some variation of the basic same question. Had he intended or did he at all anticipate that War of the Worlds would throw its audience into the United States into a panic? In the end, he died, really a kind of a, a early death at 70. And there's many articles that you can read on his death and you'll find very sad details of how his life went on, how his death went on. I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'm not gonna gossip on that. You can all find that yourself. But his, his final years were not happy, health-filled, good time years. So I think I've made a point, right? Lastly, this demonic agenda is why Hollywood started soap operas in the 1930s on radio first. It became so big and so addictive and sold so much product that it transitioned to TV for a longer length of time, lasting an hour, starting in the 50s. While the original intent was selling products, meaning consumerism, 
It was the first agenda of gossip, backbiting, slander, and having affairs that that and, and rumors of affairs and so on that got the women uh, basically hooked into wanting the same thing. It, it got into the heart of women wanting to act out and perform and have the lives of the so-called glamour that they were watching on TV by the 50s came in. It wrecked the family. It is because of this, it wrecked the, the family. It was no more leave it to beaver. They wanted the lives that they watched on the soap operas. They wanted that drama. They wanted those affairs. They wanted the rich. They wanted to be rich and famous and go to the ball, whatever. You know what I'm talking about. And then, and then we just had to, you know, the addiction got so bad. We got, we, now we got to get it into the men. And it just grew and grew into late night soaps. Do you remember, I think back then, was it called Dallas or Dynasty or, I don't know, some big ranch somewhere. It, it, and then it transitioned into Desperate Housewives. And then it became truly evil, like American Horror Story. Okay, you see where I'm going with this. I don't, I don't need to spell all this out. You understand the point I'm making. It all falls, falls under the category of a wicked tongue with swords to kill you. And it started getting the kids in the same time period called cartoons. How happy was every parent to sit down the little ones in front of the TV for two or three hours on Saturday mornings and watch cartoons? Today, fast forward today cartoons, to the today's cartoons and animated so-called motion pictures, it's nothing short of porn. That's what they're making for our little ones. It is the animated and the cartoons that are now the most evil pornography on planet Earth. This Potter's done. Done for the night, guys.